Hello, good afternoon. It's Sunday, July 18, 2021. My name is Manuel Mejorada. I am reviving and activating this writing blog or on YouTube uh, because uh, this is something I've always wanted to do. But of course, because I've been busy with uh, political commentaries, uh, it has sort of have been relegated to the side. But uh, I really want to make this a regular activity, uh, perhaps once a week i'll do it uh, live so that uh, i won't have to worry about editing and you know um, uh, preparing the uh, illustrations and the other material and stuff so i will be doing this in english uh, because i hope to also reach uh, more people around the world who might be interested in learning how to write better uh, in english especially so uh, today um um, my focus uh, will be on uh, how to write short because uh, we are now living in the age of uh, Twitter, uh, Facebook, Instagram, and other social media where the emphasis is on writing uh, very short and crisp messages uh, to reach your audience because nobody wants to spend so much time reading stuff and uh, it is now more important than ever uh, to be able to write in just a few words, a few sentences, and very short uh, paragraphs. Of course, we are aware that uh, for Twitter, we're only limited to 140 characters per tweet, and uh, that can seem very cramped uh, for many people. But when you are able to uh, master the rules of writing short, you know, 140 characters can be a lot of space for a good writer uh, in English or even in Tagalog or any other language for that matter. So uh, today's uh, vlog uh, will be, uh, uh, I'll be using uh, this uh, book from my mentor at the Pointer uh, Institute in St. Petersburg, uh, uh, Florida. Uh, it's uh, entitled How to Write Short. No, uh, Dr. Roy, Roy Peter Clark uh, was my mentor when I attended the seminar at the Pointer Institute uh, uh, way back, uh, the first one was in uh, November uh, November 1989, no? and then the second one was in uh, December to, uh, 1990, uh, November 1989, no? in the first one, the second one was December uh, 1990. So you can see that uh, way, way back, uh, I was already familiar with the works of uh, Dr. Roy Peter Clark, and he is considered the writing guru in the United States and all over the world. Uh, his works are so famous uh, that many journalists uh, always uh, uh, buy his books and uh, follow his blogs uh, so that uh, they can continue to improve on their writing craft. So uh, I'm so lucky to have uh, been uh, engaged with uh, Dr. Clark uh, when I was, uh, I think it was uh, 20, 30 years old, no? Uh, 1989, I was just 30 years old, and uh, I had uh, one week uh, with him, along with uh, about 16 other fellows at the Pointer Institute, and I was the only Filipino, and I'm proud of it. I was the only Filipino, and uh, with me at that time were uh, all Americans, no? uh, journalists from uh, all over the uh, United States, uh, uh, TV journalists, radio broadcasters, and uh, mostly newspaper reporters. So... Uh, today, I will uh, uh, discuss with you how, uh, based on this book, uh, how do, how are we, how can we, no? how can we improve our writing uh, so that uh, we can uh, get attuned to this uh, demand for crisp and short uh, writing in the age of Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and other social media uh, platforms. So I prepared a slide so that... Uh, uh, this can be an uh, academic uh, type uh, discussion. Uh, so uh, as you can see, this is the cover of the book, and that is Dr. Roy Peter Clark uh, uh, on the image. Huh? So uh, one of the things that he said in his book is, we are living in a time-starved culture, bloated with information, hungry for the lean, clear, simple, and uh, direct. So that is very obvious because, uh, as you can see, uh, every day, uh, even just with our Facebook uh, uh, news feeds, we are bombarded with hundreds and hundreds of uh, 
uh, information or news uh, items and uh, of course updates from our friends uh, pictures and uh, so many more no uh, that uh, it's very hard to really keep track of what's happening uh, to everybody so it's very important that if we want to be able to communicate well we should uh, uh, aim for that uh, very very short uh, uh, message so that uh, when people uh, read it uh, when the our post shows up on their timeline uh, they will not have to uh, spend uh, too much time uh, reading them no? so that's the importance and uh, uh, ha having said that uh, uh, it becomes um, doubly important for anybody to develop that skill because in our professions and even uh, in uh, social media because social media is now becoming a very very vibrant uh, uh, platform for the new entrepreneur uh, more and more people are now turning to social media uh, to through Twitter, Instagram, uh, YouTube, no, uh, and Facebook uh, to earn money. So it's uh, really important uh, that we uh, are able to communicate uh, very well and effectively uh, with the use of uh, uh, clearly and simply uh, uh, writing that is simple and very clear and uh, direct. Okay. So. Uh, the nice thing about this book is uh, uh, we are reminded that the most important messages in our lives are short. No? I love you. I do. Will you marry me? You're fine. And messages along that line. No? So you don't need to use too many words to deliver, to convey what you have in mind. So messages of just a word, a phrase, or a short sentence or two, what he calls micro-messages. Lean heavily on every word and live and die. Every word is very important, and an extra word can be uh, burdensome and could already uh, destroy or even uh, diminish the power of uh, your message. So uh, one of the examples of how uh, words can... Uh, uh, how uh, powerful words are, no? the impact on the reader uh, is demonstrated by these two headlines. When Osama bin Laden was killed by uh, special, uh, uh, by the Navy SEALs no? uh, at his home in uh, Pakistan, uh, you will see on the left side uh, uh, the image of the New York Times no? that came out with the news about that uh, successful mission conducted by the Navy SEALs. And it says, Bin Laden killed by U.S. forces in Pakistan. Kama, Obama says, declare, uh, declare, declaring U.S. justice has been done. So that message was uh, conveyed in a total of 15 words. But on the other side, uh, the St. Petersburg Times, no? Uh, which uh, is where the Pointer Institute is located. It just used one word, dead. No? And that it had a subheadline uh, that states that the uh, uh, U.S. Uh, US uh, forces struck down and killed Obama bin Laden in Pakistan and then take control of his uh, remains. So uh, uh, in just uh, one word, it was a very powerful uh, uh, message that uh, nobody can miss the impact of the story then. No? So with the picture of Obama bin Laden, it was certain to capture the attention of uh, anybody uh, seeing that uh, uh, newspaper on that day. No? So that's uh, the difference. New York Times, 15 words. St. Petersburg uh, Times, uh, one word, just dead. No? Okay. So... Uh, to be a good writer, you have to be familiar with the masters, the great uh, writers of uh, a lifetime. And one of them, of course, uh, will be William uh, Shakespeare. And William Shakespeare demonstrated how long and short writing can coexist. More than 400 years ago, William Shakespeare built his fame on the construction of 15 uh, all of 37 plays, no? more or less, at least half of them masterpieces. Uh, no? 
I would like to greet uh, our supporter in the United Kingdom, uh, Michael Sopina UK, C, you know, uh, good afternoon. Iba po ang topic natin ngayon. Yes, uh, this is a different uh, blog, no? And uh, this is a break from my usual uh, political stuff, no? Uh, so that uh, I would also be able to greet, uh, to the share uh, my experience as a journalist so that the, the younger ones especially, and even the older ones, no? because uh, there is, it's never too late to uh, learn new things. It's never too late uh, to improve on uh, one's uh, writing abilities. And if you are a professional, uh, the more reason for uh, everybody, uh, for you, uh, to develop that interest to write well. So good afternoon uh, to you, my castle in the UK, and of course to your husband, Captain uh, Castle in the British Army. Thank you very much for uh, stopping by. Okay. So William Shakespeare, as I was saying, uh, wrote a total of 37 plays. No? Half of them are masterpieces. And uh, if you are an avid uh, lover of words and literature, uh, you should have uh, been exposed to some of these writings of William Shakespeare. But he also penned uh, uh, 154 uh, love poems called sonnets, each uh, exactly uh, 14 lines in length. So the sonnets of William Shakespeare uh, have uh, that characteristic of only 14 lines. But uh, his other works were the longer plays, the tragedies, and of course, Romeo and Juliet, no? uh, King Lear, uh, just to name two, uh, among others. So if you want to re really to improve your uh, writing, I would suggest that uh, if uh, you haven't had the chance to get a copy of uh, uh, William Shakespeare's uh, Great Place, no? And it's very easy nowadays. You can just uh, download the, uh, this place on your smartphone and you can read them uh, anywhere you are uh, while uh, traveling to work uh, or during your free time having coffee at a coffee shop. Uh, uh, anywhere. You don't have to uh, bring those heavy books, which I did uh, when I was uh, uh, younger. So Shakespeare demonstrated how long and short writing can coexist. So he wrote longer pieces, uh, his great plays, and then he wrote uh, 154 love poems uh, that he called the sonnets. Now we have all, uh, we are familiar with the saying that a picture can speak a thousand words. That is uh, an illustration that uh, when we look at a good picture can convey to us uh, a lot of things, no? We can see so many things. We can experience what is portrayed in a picture. So a well-taken uh, photograph, no? A picture that has a, a good lighting, a good angle, a good subject, uh, can speak to us in so many ways. So that's where the saying, a, a picture can speak a thousand words. But with this emphasis on a short writing, uh, uh, Dr. Roy Peter Clark uh, introduces us to this new concept that some words may be worth more than a thousand pictures. So it's the other way around uh, because with the good uh, short writing, uh, we can deliver, we can convey our uh, message effectively. Writing in short forms does not require the sacrifice of literary values. Uh, in uh, the present age, uh, we are familiar with, uh, you know, um, people texting in abbreviations no? uh, or uh, what they call uh, the emojis and other stuff. No? Uh, the, the words are misspelled deliberately so that they become shorter. Maybe uh, they are too lazy to spell out the, the words uh, in the entirety. But uh, if you really want to be a good writer, you have to resist that. You have to write the words uh, properly uh, without sacrificing the literary value. It's now a matter of skill to, to be able to uh, pack into just uh, one short sentence or paragraph the entirety of your uh, message. So what are the purposes of short writing? Uh, to enshrine, to amuse, to inspire, to explain, uh, to remember, uh, because uh, uh, most of us uh, 
uh, jot down reminders to ourselves. We keep a no small notebook. Or in my case, I have on my uh, smartphone a uh, an application called uh, Evernote. So that is where I store all my reminders. That is also where I store all the clippings from the newspaper articles that I encounter on the internet. No? So it's very handy and uh, it's so easy to access uh, everything that you have clipped and stored in uh, Evernote. No? So to narrate, to sell, to alert and inform, to remember and to uh, converse. No? Okay. So you will ask, how short is short? No? Uh, sh uh, of course, uh, when uh, when you write and you, you want to uh, adhere to this uh, uh, new trend for writing short, uh, you will ask yourself, how short is short? Length is relative. But uh, usually, uh, based on the studies by Dr. Roy Peter Clark, uh, 300 words, no? more or less. No? It doesn't have to be 300 words exactly. No? It can be 280, it can be uh, 320, 350, but it should just be around that uh, figure so that uh, it isn't too long no? uh, to uh, bore the subject or maybe uh, it is uh, too long that uh, the five minutes that uh, uh, your reader might want to give to your uh, message uh, will not finish it anymore. No? And uh, you lose the purpose of trying to deliver or uh, convey a message. Now, how do we become better no? as a writer because uh, uh, many people uh, feel that uh, they need uh, you know uh, lessons every day uh, and uh, the question comes up comes up uh, do we need to master the rules of grammar before we can become good writers and on that question about the, the rules of grammar my answer is yes and no we have to master them yes and no why do I say yes? Yes, of course, because uh, you cannot write well if uh, you do not uh, somehow know or uh, have a feel of how uh, a grammatically correct uh, sentence uh, is written. No, because you do not have to uh, study the rules of grammar uh, you know, and memorize them, uh, that these are the rules uh, for the ad uh, adjectives and so on and so on. Uh, and to be honest with you, I don't even know uh, the rules of grammar. If you ask me what particular rule applies to uh, anything that I write, and I will uh, give you a blank stare because I don't know. Uh, maybe I just know a few, but uh, uh, when I write, I no longer become conscious of uh, uh, the rules of grammar because I don't know them. I just know. Uh, it comes naturally to me. So what do I mean by that? Over the years, uh, as you continue working on your craft, as you continue to develop, uh, as you continue to practice, as you continue to write, these uh, these rules will come to you naturally, especially uh, if you uh, read a lot, no? because uh, writers uh, need the models. To grow in our craft, according to uh, Roy Peter Clark, and uh, I agree with him, and I think every writer will agree that we need models. No? To grow in our craft, we study the works of masters, then imitate them and adopt them till they conform to our sense of vision and begin to sound like us. Now, what does this mean? This, uh, this means, of course, number one, you read a lot. And when you read a lot, uh, it's better if you pick uh, three or four uh, good writers uh, that you really like and uh, Read their books, no? read the, their books carefully so that uh, not only do you, uh, are you entertained with the stories that they tell or the information that they convey to you, but at the same time, you see how uh, they craft their writing and then uh, what on the, one of the, the uh, habits that I developed early was copying. No? Uh, you, when you read and you come across a very good phrase or sentence uh, or paragraph, I, I would urge you to do the same, uh, to do uh, what uh, many, many uh, good writers have been doing for uh, centuries now, and that is to 
copy them. You imitate. No, when you write uh, a quotation, no, when you write down what you have read unconsciously, uh, the words uh, become part of you. No? Uh, the the act of writing by hand, especially, you know, I would uh, recommend that you write by hand on a notebook. I always bring with me a notebook. No, uh, this black uh, is a moleskin uh, uh, notebook, and uh, I have. Uh, uh, I must have uh, filled up uh, hundreds of them uh, in my entire life. No, uh, in the past, I of course uh, when I didn't have money, I just used uh, ordinary notebooks. No, I always uh, I also <clears throat> uh, bring about bring with me a yellow pad uh, paper. No, so this is uh, uh, the notes uh, usually the quotations that I copy I put down here in the notebook, but generally. Uh, what I copy are just uh, jotted down in this uh, yellow notebook. So the, the the key here is to have a notebook or uh, pieces of paper are ready. Uh, of the uh, of course uh, you will have a pen. No, I use fountain pens. I love fountain pens. I'm collecting them now. No, let me just show you some of the <laughs> the fountain pens that uh, I have already collected. This one is. Uh, a mini moon man, no? pretty small. And uh, this one is Jin Hao, and this one is uh, also moon man, I think. No, and uh, I'm beginning to love the Chinese uh, made uh, uh, fountain pens, they're cheap and they're uh, very nice, so they serve my uh, purpose. So I keep doing it, no, uh, write down uh, the good uh, uh, passages. Uh, the sentences and paragraphs until it becomes uh, a habit and the, the you will realize as you keep doing it every day no every day do it and do it uh, your writing will start to sound like the ones that like the the writing of the masters uh, you are using as uh, models no? okay so when I was growing up I was very lucky because uh, since uh, I, if I remember correctly, since I was in uh, grade uh, four, uh, I had uh, uh, aunts who subscribed to the Reader's Digest. And uh, I vividly remember there were many times when uh, I was bored with class. You know? That was uh, one of the things I remember about uh, my elementary grades. And uh, I would go to my aunt's uh, house and uh, just uh, read uh, Reader's Digest. I would uh, pretend to be sick. Uh, that's uh, what uh, I did when I was in the elementary grades. When I I didn't like uh, class anymore. Uh, so, but I compensated my education with lots and lots of reading. So, Reader's Digest was uh, was very nice because uh, Reader's Digest was a compilation of uh, books and uh, uh, of books and uh, articles and. Uh, other uh, stuff, no, uh, that were condensed, no. Uh, Reader's Digest is specialized in the condensation uh, of uh, major uh, works of art, meaning they really trim down uh, the each uh, sentence and paragraph and the article is trimmed down to the bare minimum, uh, so that uh, it it uh, the the message was kept intact, but the number of words or the length of the article or book was shortened significantly. So maybe because of uh, so much uh, of reading Reader's Digest uh, uh, almost every day, you know, because uh, uh, my aunt had the uh, back issues and uh, I just kept uh, digging them out uh, uh, every time I was there. So I read uh, years and years of Reader's Digest by the time I finished my elementary grade. So I didn't know it then, but that was the foundation of my writing. So. When I was in high school, I didn't really know that I could write. But when I reached college at the University of the Philippines, uh, uh, Visayas now, no, it used to be called the uh, UP College Iloilo or OPSI. Uh, I I enrolled in the freshman English course of a very great uh, professor. I can still remember her name. Uh, she is uh, uh, dead now, but uh, I still remember her. Her name was uh, Professor Lourdes de Castro. And uh, she had this uh, uh, exercise that she made us to do uh, almost uh, once, uh, at least once a week, uh, called the Scribble. We had a Scribble notebook 
which I didn't understand then uh, was a uh, was going to introduce me into journal uh, writing. So it's a scribble notebook where we were required to just write. You know? uh, we were just required to write and write without rules, uh, without uh, having to worry about you know uh, the paragraphs uh, being in proper order, the sentences in uh, being in proper order. Just write and write. It was uh, I remember her calling it free free writing. You no. Know? So whatever comes to mind, you just write it in your notebook, even if they don't make sense to anybody else who might uh, come to read them. So that was my uh, introduction to uh, writing. And to my surprise, uh, at the end of the semester, my professor gave me a rating of one. Uh, actually, it was 1.25 and uh, because uh, uh, I was always late in uh, submitting uh, my requirements, and my professor said, I could have get, given you a flat one if you only submitted uh, your writings on time. But uh, what I did was uh, about three or four assignments, I crammed and uh, did it in one day, and that was when I submitted it, but still, I got a very high grade. So use a model, and uh, again, if you are still able to access Reader's Digest, and you want to uh, know how a tightly written word or sentence is done, Reader's Digest would be your best model. So the hard part of the writing process is the cutting, trimming down. No? So you imagine a tree, and uh, you don't want the tree to uh, have so many branches and leaves and flowers, so you prune them down no? so that the barest minimum yeah, is left. So as uh, Dr. Roy Peter Clark said, it is often those final cuts, the finishing touches that create the most dazzling facets of the diamond, a jewel of short writing ready to be polished. So you always look at uh, your writing as a rough diamond stone. Uh, and uh, you have to really uh, polish it to tr to trim it to uh, use uh, uh, pining uh, and other uh, rough uh, uh, rough stones so that the impurities can be removed. So that is how uh, that is how uh, to look at uh, the editing uh, process. You remove the non-essential no? uh, of uh, of what you have written. Not everything that you write. That not everything that uh, comes out of uh, uh, your mind or you type uh, is really uh, that important to to be retained. No, sometimes uh, uh, in my experience, uh, uh, if you really want to uh, come up with the good writing, uh, you have to write and rewrite and rewrite. No, so that means that you have to edit it and edit it. So if you have come across the name of Umberto Eco, he said. It is everyday writing that inspires the most committed work, not the other way around. So when uh, you want to uh, become a good writer, you have to be conscious about the need to write every day. There, are, there have been writers uh, uh, who shared their own experiences. And uh, oftentimes, they also had to uh, contend with the writer's block. But because there is a need to uh, inculcate or to uh, instill the habit uh, into their system, even if there is nothing coming out of their minds, they would still sit down at the appointed hour. They would usually pick an hour of the day, uh, most of them in the morning. Uh, upon waking up, they would sit down in front of their typewriter back then. But now, of course, we have laptops and we have uh, desktop computers, so it's much uh, easier now. And they would uh, write, no? And if uh, there is uh, nothing coming out, they would just sit there for the entire hour that is allotted for their writing time. So that uh, your body becomes uh, accustomed to using that particular hour uh, to induce your mind uh, to produce uh, ideas and thoughts uh, during that particular hour. So in my case, I can write almost any time of the day but uh, still, the best time for me to write is early morning. As soon as I wake up and uh, I have my first cup of coffee, I already sit down. 
uh, well, most often I would uh, write uh, in this uh, small notebook or maybe uh, uh, this uh, yellow pad, no? Uh, so, okay. So, uh, it's everyday writing that inspires the most committed works, not the other way around. What this means is uh, when you write every day, uh, whatever comes to mind, uh, you will never know. Uh, you will never know that uh, a short sentence or short paragraph that you have written down one day will one month, two months, three months down the line can provide an idea. No, It can be the seed of a longer piece that you will uh, want to write. No? So you write and write uh, every day. No? Okay. In other words, before, if you want to write long, begin by writing short. And again, uh, it's uh, this is uh, very important now uh, because of uh, Twitter, uh, Facebook, and Instagram. If your goal is to write short and well, you must begin by reading the best short writing you can find. Start by keeping a commonplace book now. This is uh, uh, an illustration now of this commonplace book, no? a notebook that contains treasured short passages from favorite authors next to bits and pieces of your own uh, writing. Uh, if you uh, if you were familiar with uh, Leonardo da Vinci, uh, I would suggest that you also uh, read on his biography uh, because you will find out that uh, uh, Leonardo da Vinci was... Uh, uh, a meticulous note taker. No, uh, he really wrote down a lot uh, every day in his uh, uh, notebooks, and luckily his notebooks are still well preserved. No? Uh, the paper on which uh, these uh, notes were written have uh, remained intact up to now, and scholars uh, continue to scour his notebooks for gems of wisdom and uh, a good look into how Leonardo da Vinci. Uh, became uh, what he was a great master, uh, not only as uh, a sculptor uh, and uh, a painter, no, uh, the Mona Lisa, of course, uh, you should uh, be familiar with that, no, uh, but also as a scientist and uh, inventor. Okay, so uh, to run down, no, uh, the lessons uh, we learned from uh, 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 Roy Peter Clark, keep a day book devoted to short writing so it doesn't have to be more skin no? it doesn't have to be expensive no uh, you can uh, uh, buy a cheap uh, notebook and uh, that will uh, do the work uh, well uh, to, to me i'm now becoming more sentimental uh, because it's more expensive by a sort of treasure treasure it uh, some more no number two include examples of great writing collected from other sources now with the uh, with the internet, it's now easy to uh, find uh, uh, great works of uh, literature, no? And you don't even have to copy them if you if you want to uh, uh, take the longer ones. Uh, you just uh, clip them, no? As I said, I would uh, suggest the use of uh, Evernote uh, as your note collection system uh, on your uh, smartphone, no? So my Evernote is uh, uh, contained here, no? Uh, let me... Uh, let me show you my Evernote uh, here on uh, my desktop no? uh, so that uh, you will have an idea of uh, how I uh, keep all those uh, all those newspaper clippings no? and uh, even notes from uh, the YouTube uh, uh, lectures that I usually watch. No? I, I like to transcribe. No? I like to transcribe uh, what uh, I... Uh, what is written? No? What is written uh, uh, in the uh, in the uh, or what is uh, uh, said in the uh, uh, in uh, the YouTube uh, uh, material or videos? No. So let me just uh, uh, go first. No, uh, to this uh, um, Evernote uh, uh, Evernote. Uh, uh, app that I use for uh, note taking. Okay, so that's it, no? So uh, uh, you'll see that this is a newspaper article uh, that I clipped from the Los Angeles Times. No, uh, it's so easy, no? Uh, uh, you'll see here, no, that uh, 
I have uh, so many uh, articles already clipped so that when I write, and uh, I remember that uh, I clipped something uh, in the past, no? uh, all I need is uh, really to look them up. So I have here uh, a section uh, called uh, Recently Captured, and this is divided uh, into web clips, no? uh, images, yeah, uh, documents, uh, even audio. I can, uh, I can uh, dictate uh, uh, memos to myself uh, on uh, Evernote no? uh, using its uh, audio function. So that's, uh, that's the advantage now of uh, technology. And uh, I would suggest that uh, you also take advantage of uh, the opportunities to, to really widen uh, uh, your learning about uh, writing. No? So let me go back to uh, the final uh, uh, the final slide. No, okay. So write short pieces of your own, inspired by the ones you've collected. And you know, uh, many of you are doing this uh, every day. No, because a lot of you, uh, when you watch, uh, for example, my YouTube uh, vlogs or my live streams. Uh, a lot of you uh, post your own comments, no, uh, in reaction to what I say or maybe what I post on Facebook. You are also uh, writing short pieces of your own uh, uh, ideas, of your own opinions. So keep doing it, no, keep doing it because that is the path that, that you need to take uh, to become better. Number four, over time, examine your short writing for seeds of longer pieces. No? So uh, it's also a good practice uh, when you have a notebook to, to scan uh, what you have written uh, uh, every once in a while, especially after six months, even uh, one year, because you will sometimes discover that there are things there uh, that could be expanded into uh, a longer article. Number five, practice writing plain sentences containing a grace note, an interesting word that stands out, no? such as, uh, well, this is uh, one example in the book, no? So uh, always do that, no? Always do that. Uh, practice writing plain sentences. Because uh, like uh, any other skill, no? Well, you cannot be uh, Michael Jordan uh, if Michael Jordan did devote uh, thousands of hours uh, shooting at the basketball or practicing his dribbling and his move, no? See, it's the same thing uh, for writing. And number six, you will run into great short writing in the most surprising uh, places from uh, restaurant menus to restroom walls. Record this with your day in your day book or snap a photo with your uh, cell phone. Huh? So sometimes uh, we we tend to take for granted uh, what we see around us. No? But uh, even in uh, uh, restaurants or, or even uh, in the uh, uh, Posters uh, we see on the wall, uh, there are many gems of uh, good short writing that uh, we can discover and that we can learn from. So that is our brief uh, lesson this afternoon. No? Uh, and uh, I said, uh, I hope to do this uh, every week uh, so that uh, uh, this will stay forever. And uh, I'm doing this in English because uh, I can see that uh, all over the world, no? Uh, a lot of people uh, want or are interested in learning how to improve their writing. So in my own small way, I hope to be able to contribute to the growth, the personal growth of uh, many people. It doesn't have to be thousands. I, uh, I'll be happy to see one or two or three who will tell me later that they have learned something from my uh, writing 101 vlogs. Again, this is Manuel Mejorada from Metro Manila, Philippines.